Good morning. How lovely to see you again. It's Sunday morning, Sunday the 3rd of May. Uh, another day, another thought. Um, we mentioned covenant yesterday, thinking about uh, the covenant agreement that God has committed himself to us uh, with a covenant. Um, and it's, it's, it, it, my, my thoughts have flown all over the place because that verse we looked at yesterday in Isaiah um, talked about a covenant of peace. And re I was remembering that the message of the angels when they came to the shepherds, when the baby had been born, when the Messiah had been given uh, by God was a peace, goodwill towards men. And we think of the Lord Jesus as the Prince of Peace. And the covenant that he brought in is the covenant of peace. And it's so radically different to the Old Covenant. Um, our, our Bible is divided into Old Testament and New Testament, Old Covenant and New Covenant. And that's why, as New Covenant people, we have to be really careful applying things from the Old Covenant into the New Covenant. We are under a different covenant not as not not any less binding on both parties because God's side of the covenant has been done and made and finished and sealed with the blood of Jesus our part of the covenant is when we invite Jesus into our lives to be our Lord and Savior that's when we join in to the covenant and our commitment to the covenant needs to be as binding on us as God's commitment to the covenant is on him. When we look at the old covenant, the old covenant was God saying to a particular group of people who were all descendants of one particular man um, that God had chosen, he, he spoke to them and he said, if you will follow me, if you will be my people, I will look after you, I will keep you safe, I will bless you. I will undertake for you, I will provide for you, I will lead you, I will direct you, I will give you a wonderful land, I will be your God, I'll fight for you, I'll be with you wherever you go. If you will, in your turn, commit to me and you will keep my covenant, you will offer sacrifices to deal with any sin in your midst and you will live in relationship with me, with me as your Lord um, and Master and you as my people. And God's covenant uh, with the Old Testament was sealed with the, the blood of the sacrifices um, that were made all the time for people's sins. Um, and <coughs> oh, excuse me. The new covenant is sealed with one sacrifice, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. The Old Testament was celebrated, the Old Covenant was celebrated with the Passover meal, the new covenant is celebrated with the Lord's Supper, the communion, when we break bread together, when we eat together. But I was thinking about, have a look today um, at the great passage in the Old Testament. There's several places where a new covenant uh, is foretold, and one of the greatest of them is in Jeremiah 31. It's easy to remember, Jeremiah 31, 31, um, 31, 31. And isn't that interesting? Three in one. God is three in one. Jeremiah 31, 31. Um, and when God says something twice, he's emphasizing the truth of it. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know this book? This book is the most amazing book. It is so beautifully put together, so Im immaculately constructed. It's true to itself from one end to the other. It is full of truths and, and beauty and, and the very way it's written is beautiful. And I, that's why, for me, we have to be really careful with some of the more modern um, translations, in inverted commas, of the scriptures. Because some of that beauty of construction, some of that mystery of the word is lost in some of the modern. In trying to make it easier to read, people have lost the... Um, the depth of the word. So 
don't use some of these modern translations as study Bibles. Use them as useful reading, but they're not. I'm sorry, I'm off on a tangent. Forgive me if that upsets anyone. So Jeremiah 31, 31. Here we are. Let me just read you these beautiful words and think about, use them as your thought for the day. Uh, Jeremiah writes this. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after these days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbour and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. So the promise of the new covenant. Interesting in the middle of that that the Lord says, Even which they, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband. And he makes the comparison between the covenant made between God and his people and the covenant made between a man and a woman to make them husband and wife. That covenant, um, I mean, the classic is the, is, is the church service, usually the Anglicans at church service, which says this is not to be taken in lightly or without, for, without thought. You know, um, relationship between um, one man and one woman should never be undertaken lightly because it is a covenant. It is a legally binding agreement. This is why living together is so so unsatisfactory for so many people because there is no publicly declared and legal covenant between the two parties. They're free to leave any time they want. And that the, the reason that God made a covenant with, with his people and with us is so that we can feel completely secure and safe. God is committed to us utterly and completely, to care for us, to provide for us, to lead us, to heal us, to be our father, to be our friend. He is committed to us, completely committed to us. And he will not break that covenant. If the covenant ever were to fail, it would be because we break it. We can be utterly and completely, and I don't know any bigger word than utterly, we can be absolutely secure because God is in a covenant relationship with us and every time we take communion break bread and drink a representation of the wine that wine that that drink represents to us the blood of Jesus which sealed the covenant Jesus specifically said it when he uh, had that last supper with his friends with his disciples he said this is my blood of the new covenant which is given for you. The sealing of the covenant was so important. Um, uh, the, the sign of the covenant was the blood, just like the sign of the covenant between a man and a woman is a ring given and received. We are bound to God when we accept his offer of a relationship and a covenant, and he is bound to us, and it's a relationship just like a husband and wife is a relationship that grows and develops. So the covenant relationship between us and God grows and develops. And it's individual, where before it was for a nation. Now it is for the individual. Each one of us is a member of the covenant of God. No one will have to say to anyone, uh, everyone will know. Have a look at that. Jeremiah 31, 31. Praise God for the new covenant. See you later on, those of you who are coming to church this morning, coming to church this morning on, uh, on um, Zoom. Uh, oh, no, so, sorry, it's this afternoon, isn't it? Two o'clock this afternoon. We'll see you then for a breaking of bread together as we celebrate being members of the new covenant. God bless you. See you tomorrow.